What's up, Facebook Live? Hunter Lewis, editor of Cooking Light, and today we are making the perfect BLTs. So you might be thinking BLTs, I know how to make them, and you probably do. I'm gonna show you how to make them better. Uh, there are several different keys to making BLTs. It's one of the, if not the most simple dish of the summer, uh, but you need to think about every single component of the sandwich to make the ultimate one. So we're gonna start with the bacon. Come on around. We've got Benton's Bacon. This is from Eastern Tennessee, from the Smoky Mountains. A bacon genius named Alan Benton makes this bacon. Um, really, really smoky. It's got nice salt on it. Um, takes a lot of care on this. Use your favorite bacon. I love Benton's, I love Mnuski's. The key to making really good bacon for the sandwich, the cooking light way, is to do it on a rack, set inside a baking sheet. Start in a cold 400 degree oven. The hot air is gonna build up and it's gonna circulate around, circulate around the bacon and it's gonna dry it out, crisp it up, and it's not gonna render in its own fat. And you can save some of the fat for dressings or other things later. Um, so this cooked for about 20 minutes in a 400 degree oven, started cold on the rack. And now we're going to uh, put on a paper towel and drain more of that fat away. All right, so bacon, you know, we've got a, a, a sister site called Extra Crispy. It's a breakfast and, uh, and brunch only site. They just named their bacon critic yesterday, a guy named Scott Gold. Um, Scott, if you're out there in the universe, in the bacon universe, we wanna hear from you. What's your favorite bacon for a BLT? Extra Crispy team, give us a shout. Um, wanna know what kind of bacon you're using for BLTs. All right, so bacon, almost done here. Hey, Hunter, all of our users cook bacon this way too, so they're on board. They've all tried it, they loved it. People of my own kind, love <laughs> it. So you guys know the Cooking Light way. We're gonna to link to a video too that will show you if you're a, uh, a neophyte to this. All right, so we got our bacon ready. Um, you wanna do, you wanna cook your bacon just a few minutes before you make your sandwich, and I'll tell you why in a minute. You, you want all of that to be warm. Okay, so the next key to making the perfect BLT, the bread. Now, I love really good bread. I love fancy bread. Um, I love sourdough bread with a lot of tang. When you're making a BLT, you need to go simple. Um, we've just got a very, very uh, mild sourdough bread, and um, you don't want the bread to be the star. It's gotta blend in. It's gotta be there as a vehicle for the other ingredients. And the reason why I'm cooking it this way on a baking sheet is that I wanna toast one side, warm it up, and then I want the other side to steam a little bit. So you want one side toasted, and you want the other side a little bit soft and steamy. Otherwise, it gets too crunchy, it gets in the way, kind of you know, cuts the, uh, the roof of your mouth. You don't want that. You want one side a little bit soft. So 400 degree oven, right after the bacon comes out. And if you're just joining us, you're like, all right, this guy's making BLTs. Do I know how to make a BLT? We're gonna show you how to make the perfect one. So we got our bacon. This is Benton's bacon, super smoky. Smells really good in here right now. Um, this is rendered in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Drain off the extra fat, paper towels, and now it's time to turn to the tomatoes. Okay, so we've got nice, beautiful heirloom tomatoes here. We always store our tomatoes, you'll see them at the farmer's market, uh, stem side down, keeps them fresh a little bit longer. Um, so we're just gonna mix these up, and we're gonna salt them before we put them on the sandwich. And the reason why we do this is because it's gonna draw out a little bit of the flavor, create maximum juiciness. It's gonna go here. Everyone says the, the key is the bacon. Key is the bacon, that's right. But you don't want the bacon outshine the tomatoes, and you don't want the tomatoes to outshine the lettuce. Everything has to be balanced in its harmony, in its place. I think BLT is actually the perfect, most balanced summer dish that I know of. Hunter, how long does tomato season last? Uh, depends where you are, but well, down here in the south, tomato season starts around late June and lasts through as long as uh, late September. Really? Yeah, I mean, sometimes the cherry tomatoes will pop longer than that. How do you know, so we know that heirloom tomatoes are supposed to be nice and tender. How do we know if it's too soft to use just by cutting into it or? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty you know, obvious. There, there's a couple keys you can, you can uh, 
you know, do the, do the touch test at the market, but the, the farmers don't want you manhandling everything, mm -hmm. you know, so it should feel heavy for its size. Um, it shouldn't be overly ripe and it shouldn't be under ripe and you can feel, do that by feeling it. You know, but the other thing is, you're gonna have to get a couple and you're gonna have to put them open. Um, if you've got a farmer who is, uh, who's got samples there at the market, chances are uh, that's the guy you're gonna wanna go with because you can sample ahead of time. Um, and look, the, the deal is, we're not making BLTs in the spring, we're not making them in the fall, we're not making them in the winter. BLT season is the summer, that's now. Don't eat BLTs out of season. Bad idea. Bad idea. Okay, so we're gonna season our tomatoes, lightly seasoned with kosher salt. And you don't have to do this way ahead of time. You don't want them just completely leaching out all their liquid. This is just to draw out some of the flavor and some of the juices. It's gonna make for a better sandwich because it's gonna make for a juicier sandwich. A little pepper, it'll go right on the tomatoes. All right, we're gonna check on our bread. Almost there on the bread. Okay, so lettuce. There are two kinds of acceptable lettuce for a BLT. You could do romaine hearts, or you could do dripping water here. Should be dry. You can do romaine hearts, or you can do uh, iceberg. And the key will be cutting it to the uh, the width of the sandwich. So we will uh, we'll go ahead and slice some of this up. Why is it such a bad idea to eat a yellow tea if it's not in the summer? Well, look, it's not a bad idea. Let me let me retract this statement. Eat a BLT whenever you want. If you're at the diner, if you're at the cafe, you want a BLT in, in January, that's your prerogative. All I'm saying is good things come to those who wait. If you wait till the height of summer when tomatoes are popping, your BLT is going to taste better. Do what you want to do out of season, but for me, I wait until the peak of summer, starting in late July, when tomatoes are really popping, that's when I'm eating BLT. It's just gonna taste better. Okay, so we got our lettuce. I think we got plenty of lettuce here. Tops of the bread just lightly toasted. <laughs> Underside's nice and steamy. And so I've got a, a multigrain here, um, and I've got a sourdough. And we're gonna make these with a sourdough. Okay, so now it's time to assemble. I like to do all of this at the same time and not get too much of it ready ahead of time because I want the bread warm. I want the bacon warm. I want the tomatoes just salted. And of course, the other key to a perfect BLT is the mayonnaise. <laughs> um, I've got Duke's mayonnaise here. Um, I grew up in a Hellman's family, married a Duke's woman. Um, I became a convert after the uh, probably a two year mayonnaise war. And uh, now I prefer Duke's. But if you're a Hellman's person or on the West Coast, if you're a Best Foods, go for it. Okay. Time to assemble. So we've got a uh, crispy side and then we've got a uh, sort of a, a warm, soggy, toasty side. I'm doing mayo on the, uh, on the softer side. Both sides. You know, I don't know what it is, but uh, there's something about a sandwich. There's a rule about a sandwich that it tastes better if someone else makes it for you. So we're gonna make a few extra for some of the folks around here cooking light. All right. I'm gonna do tomatoes down on one side. And then we're going lettuce. A little more salt on the lettuce. 
pepper. Two strips of Benton's. Cross cut. Look at that. See how juicy everything is? It's not about the tomato, it's not about the lettuce, it's not about the bacon, it's not about the mayo, it's not about the bread, it's about all of it. All of it together. Look how perfect that is. All right, so now we got a taste. I think probably the last key to making a good BLT is to uh, eat it over the sink. So, you wanna join me? Yep. Okay, take over. So if you guys watch Facebook Live regularly, this is Rebecca Longshore, queen of Facebook Live. She's gonna join me here. You grab one side, I'll grab the other. It's called Eat Over the Sink BLT. Not bad. That's the best meal I've ever had. Seriously? Uh huh. I'm not kidding. I'm not just saying that because you're my editor either. I'm not kind of being very serious right now. We paid to say that. All right. <laughs> That's good. Let's we'll make some more for the crew. Okay. All right. So we'll follow the perfect steps to making a BLT. Here are the keys, and we want to hear from you too. What? How are you guys making yours? We got Benton's bacon cooked in the oven on a rack. For the hot air to circulate, 400 degrees. Pre-salt your tomatoes, uh, a little pepper too, draw out some of the juices. Toast your bread lightly, one side's toasted, the other side's a little soft. Duke's mayo, you can use Hellman's, we're not gonna hate. Some crunchy lettuce, we like hearts of romaine, you can use iceberg. Put it all together while everything's still warm. Eat it over the sink, make your friend a BLT. Thanks for joining us, guys.